Bring Your Own Security Radio is just about ready to start. Hosted by certified ethical hacker and CISSP Dave the IT Guy. Sit back as we talk about hackers, security, crypto, and other things you should be paying attention to. Along with our many guests, we'll also talk about tools and methods to get the job done to keep your data where it belongs with you. Okay, Dave is up to the mic and ready to go in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's right. I am live tonight. Dave, the IT guy, freezing like everybody else in half of the U.S. or more. I know that we're supposed to be down to 20 below, but tonight we're going to keep it nice and hot. Got a few different topics I want to talk about tonight, but before I waste too much time, we're going to kind of jump right into a conversation with one of my guests. He's a return guest. He's from the Cincinnati uh, Security Information Group. Uh, it's called CINPA, C-I-N-P-A. The way that thing organized somewhat confuses me, but the bottom line is Matt has kind of taken over the reins a little bit. He runs a great set of events. 2019, he's already mapped out most of his calendar for the different um, once-a-month speakers, presentations, hands-on demos, scary hackers, you name it. He, he puts together a great set of events and... Matt goes out and speaks at a lot of events nationwide. I mean, he was just telling me off air how he's out in Vegas, so we're going to let him talk about that too. Some of his other upcoming places that he'll be going to visit. And you'll want to stay tuned because before I let him go, we're going to make a huge announcement. And it all involves with Cincinnati. So if you don't live here, you better find a way to get here because you will not want to miss what Matt has in store for you. And I've already signed up. I wanted to make sure I got my seat at the table. So without further ado, Matt, are you there? Yes, Dave. Thank you very much for having me back. It's great to be here for a three-peat performance. That's right. You know, at some point or another, I'm probably just going to have to invite you to be a co-host because you just seems like I always call you and say, hey, Matt, come here and talk to me about something. So we're just going to have to bring you on and Leave you a seat at the table all the time, I think. Always great to be here. Thank you. <laughs> so I tried to kind of warm it up a little bit, and you've got so much stuff going on. So for those that may not know or those that are out of town, um, take a minute and describe what the, uh, the the security group that you run here in Cincinnati, how that's organized, and and what what time of month you guys meet, that sort of thing. Sure, absolutely. So I am the chair for the SIMPA Security SIG. Now, SIMPA is the Cincinnati Networking Professionals Association. It's a group that's been around for a very long time in the Cincinnati area. It traces its roots all the way back to the early 1990s, back in Novell Netware's heyday of being the preeminent microcomputer network operating system. The group has changed over time. Obviously, Novell lost market and mind share over time. They changed netware to networking in the name, but really, even though it's got networking roots and that's still very much on topic for the group, I usually tell people, take the word networking out, insert the word technology, and you have a group of Cincinnati technology professionals. And uh, that main group meets on the first Wednesday of each month from 7 to 9 p.m. The group's been around a very long time, and it has had several special interest groups spawn up over the course of that time. Two of those still exist. One is the uh, small business SIG, and the other is the security SIG, which is the subgroup that I run. And so we meet on the third Thursday of each month from 6.30 to 9 p.m. in Springdale. There's a big, tall First Financial Bank building that uh, we meet, the first floor there. And our registrations are part of the Tech Life Cincinnati group on meetup.com. Outstanding. So, I, I, unfortunately, my show used to air on Thursdays, and as we see tonight for 2019, one of my changes is that we are now airing on Tuesday, and 
I will honestly say there is some part of that was because I wanted to attend more of those meetings with you guys, and I was not able to because I was on the air. So I am excited to be able to start coming more often than I have in the last couple of years. So, um, And it's because of the content that you guys have had and the speakers um, and, the, and the participation that you had out there that really prompted me to try to reach out to others and, and help me get my show moved from Thursday to Tuesday. So um, that's a real kudos to to the events that you have been running um, in no small part. So nice job there. Um, let, let's talk a little bit about you individually. Um, as I teased a little bit, you just got to go out to Vegas to speak, um, and you're going to be doing some other presentations outside of your own uh, security group that you run. So speak a little bit to some of those events. That way, if people are somewhere else, they might be able to reach out and meet you there. Sure. So the event you talked about was Akamai University invited me to come out to Las Vegas to speak to them uh, regarding some solutions that I have experience with. And it was an honor and a privilege to go out there and speak to them and uh, meet some very interesting people. Um, so I really enjoyed my time out there in the middle part of the month. But I've got a lot of things coming up. So the first stop, if you will, is going to be, or the next stop, I should say, is going to be in Dayton, Ohio, on Thursday, February 7th at Ohio Information Security Forum's February meeting. Now, Ohio Information Security Forum is a group very similar to the group I'm in. It was started by um, friends of mine and uh, individuals I know, Daryl Highland, Nathan Power, and Brian Fight. The group still runs. They had their 12-year anniversary conference back in July. I was one of the speakers there. So I had a talk that was a backup talk in case they had a last-minute cancellation. Uh, it's a talk I've given several places. It may be the last time I give it live. And the talk is Fishing Forensics. Is it just suspicious or is it malicious? So not only is it something I combat my current role, in the past I've been an email administrator. So I've sort of seen nearly everything that can be done in terms of email attacks and uh, it's something that I felt I could help share that knowledge with other individuals and give them some tips and tricks and maybe some other ideas, things they haven't thought about. Uh, it's always been a, a well-received talk, so their website is ohioinfosec.org if anybody would like to check that out. Now that group normally meets the second Thursday of each month, but the second Thursday of February happened to fall on Valentine's Day, they didn't want to conflict with that, so they've moved it to the first Thursday of the month, next month only. After that, they'll go back to their second Thursday meetings. The other stop I have in Dayton is actually one of the bigger conferences for information security in Dayton. The Technology First Group puts on the OISC, which is the Ohio Info Sec Conference, and I will be speaking there giving a uh, talk, which is the OWASP Top 10 and AppSec Primer. Uh, it's part of the very technical uh, breakout session that they have uh, put together. Um, I'm happily speaking there with two friends of mine that are also in the very technical uh, breakout sessions, which are Micah Brown and Barry Kimball, very good friends of mine. Uh, they are both heavily involved in Cincinnati area information security. They uh, are also going to be speaking there. Uh, there's also a fourth individual there that is somebody I'm looking forward to meeting. And then on March 21st, I'll be speaking at the Momentum Dev Conference uh, at the Sharonville Convention Center and essentially re-giving a version of the OWASP Top 10 and AppSec Primer Talk. This was something I saw a post on Twitter from Bill Semp, and he was encouraging security folks to submit for a developer conference. And this is one of those things, when I first saw it, I thought, I'm a horrible coder. Who would want to hear anything I have to say? And then it hit me, like a ton of bricks, that, hey, 
part of the problem is that people like me aren't branching out and reaching across to developers to explain, hey, here's some quick ways you can test your code to make sure what you're putting out there is reasonably safe, or at least you've vetted some of the high-level things to harden your software. So there's this sort of weird thing that happens where developers sort of stay in their own camps, and us in security sometimes want to stick in our own group, and neither ventures over to the other side. Um, and it realized, well, I realized that Bill has been doing this for a very long time, and I thought, well, I can't leave him out there alone, so I can go talk about AppSec a little bit for any web application developers that might be attending this conference. Right. You know, I don't want to interrupt you, but I want to I want to jump in and say that's exactly right. I actually went and listened at the Las Vegas B sides at last year's uh, DEF CON. I took a, a few hours, and there were a lot of developers that reversed it, right? So the developers came to B-Sides and talked about what they do and some of the code that they reuse and the libraries that they have and things. And they were actively soliciting um, partnerships and one-on-one um, -on -one conversations with security people about what we would look for to to circumvent any code that they write. And it's it, you're exactly right that you're on the right path going up there and kind of crossing the streams, as it were, uh, for my nerd reference. But I, I, I apologize for interrupting, but that was such a great thing when I saw your list uh, when you emailed me that you were going up there that I'm actually going to try and go because I, too, am a terrible coder. And I don't know that I'll go up there and offer any great otherworldly advice to coding, but I hope to meet someone who can better let me see what they do and why they do it, and maybe it'll make me a better pen tester. So, I, great thing, and you're right about Bill Simph. I've only met him twice, and both times I was quickly grabbing my pen and notepad to take notes. So, um, you guys are pretty awesome for jumping into that Momentum DEF CON, and I hope to see you there myself. So, sorry. Please continue. I know you got more events that you're going to go do. Oh, not a not a problem. Thank you uh, for interjecting. But yeah, I'm I'm grateful to hear that uh, you understand why I'm going to sort of put myself out there in front of developers is to get the word out to them that hey, here are the things that you should really look at. Um, I, I know I've worked for small development shops and security is sometimes an afterthought and things that are start off as proof of concept quickly become production and a lot of times they've been deployed with sort of security standards in mind so this will hopefully teach them to at least catch that low hanging fruit to make themselves a little bit harder of a target and I think if those sort of partnerships can help things get better for both sides uh, us as security professionals trying to defend things that are being created by developers uh, that, you know, maybe just, you know, they need some instructional knowledge and uh, some working knowledge of how some of the security tools work to better understand how to secure their code. Yeah, well, that so was a that the, was a great way to, um, when you said the proof of concept uh, phrase, that is a great way to um, politely say, that they were making us their unwitting beta testers, um, because that's always what it seemed like to me was, was my God, why the hell am I beta testing your software for you? Don't you ever test this crap? And um, you're right. So calling it proof of concept is much nicer than unwitting beta <laughs> tester. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I have once seen a uh, a mock up of the. Uh, Former Dos Equis, most interesting man in the world, um, you know, a meme of that where it says, I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. Stay on call, my friends. That's right. Stay on call. That's right. That's awesome. So I, you know, I, yeah, I, we could probably have a whole other episode on just that kind of ridiculousness. Um, and maybe I'll make a note to, to do that of, you know, what's the most ridiculous IT scenario you've had to deal with and I 
you know, we probably need to have a three or four hour show for something like that. But I see that. Yeah, that'd uh, be good. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that I saw that um, you're so that day of DevCon, uh, the Momentum DevCon in Sharonville is also the same day of the March uh, your event, right? Your normal event uh, that same day. So it looks like you're going to be busy that whole day. Yeah, 21st of March will be a very busy day for me because that evening uh, happens to be the third Thursday, so that's our March SIMPA Security SIG meeting, and I'm actually leading a uh, digital forensics workshop. So it's going to be hands-on, instructor-led. For attendees that want to come to that, definitely bring a laptop with you if you want to participate in those workshop exercises. So I did an offensive security workshop back in December, Overall, went very well. There were some things that had I, you know, I wish I would have known or considered ahead of time. I've got a nice page of lessons learned, so these things will continue to get better and so forth. And uh, uh, big um, kudos to anybody out there that is doing um, the call for presenters and doing workshops at conferences as much work as putting together slide decks and doing research and pre prepping um, for giving a talk is uh, that is a lot of work for anybody that does workshops um, so big hats off to them uh, especially people who create these things on their own I'm essentially modifying things that are perhaps um, off of the shelf and sort of customizing them so they meet my needs uh, so that's actually based off of the um, I, w I want to call it the ANISA, the European Union Agency for Network and Information Security, uh, puts out a number of these workshops. So for those that aren't near Cincinnati, uh, definitely check out their website, www.enisa.europa.eu, and uh, those are free workshops. They've got documentation included. Uh, they're essentially VM images, and really that's what I'm basing it off of. And even for people that do participate in the workshop, they should probably go out and download this anyway because I have to pick and choose the parts of this that I want to do in sort of a classroom format. Uh, there are a lot of things that end up on the cutting room floor where you can go further than I have time to do in the workshop that I'll be conducting. Well, you know, I, I unfortunately had to miss December, and I um, I get to read some great comments um, about the event itself. And for the, again, for those that don't know, you know, here in Cincinnati, we we have a great um, regional slash local security um, subgroup of people. I mean, people would t tend to travel to these different events and, and you start seeing the same people at different places and you start making these connections and contacts and you know if nothing else it's great to start seeing some familiar faces but i've had an opportunity you know, even through yourself and your friends micah and others to meet and exchange contact info and be able to to bounce things off of via quick email you know get stuck at work and they're like, damn it, I know I've seen this, can't figure out the, the solution. Google gives you 15 solutions and you want the right one, right, and being able to email these people. So it, it's been a great surprise to me to move back to Cincinnati in the IT and security field and see this kind of um, community that's, you know, you don't have to go to a DEF CON or a Black Hat if you don't want to. There's plenty of content around here. And there probably is like that in other cities, but man, within a hundred miles of Cincinnati, you can probably get all the content you can eat. Uh, I would think. Yeah, we definitely have a great community, no doubt about it. And uh, we talked about Bill Sumpf a moment earlier. Uh, our next Simpa Security Sig meeting is on February 21st, and uh, we're having Bill Sumpf come in and speak, and uh, he started off in development and coding, if you do a search for him on Amazon.com, do an author search, there's so many books, they don't even fit on one page. You have to go to two pages. I don't think I've even glanced at that many coding books uh, in my life as he's actually written or, or co-authored. And uh, 
So that's going to be our meeting next month. Looking forward to seeing Bill again. And uh, we're also having uh, Dolph Smith and Matt Panabaker with Sophos. They're going to kick off the meeting and just sort of introduce themselves. Uh, they'll be able to talk a little bit about endpoint security for anybody that wants an offline conversation uh, with them. Uh, but they're also our food sponsor for next month. So they're going to be providing Chick-fil-A for us, which is always goes over big. Sometimes uh, we get a little pizza out at meetings, but uh, that's a great alternative. And then we're going to close with Neil O'Farrell with Schooled in Security. So he's an individual that recently moved to the Cincinnati area. And something that's near and dear to my heart is he's really trying to reach out to uh, do school outreach, uh, particularly at the younger students, high school level, and so forth. I myself had the privilege of speaking to Butler Tech students back in, um, I want to say it was early November, and I had a chance to speak in front of 80 high school, well, it was a, over 80 high school juniors on working in IT and information security, and uh, it was a great time. They were really interested in what I had to say, what I had to talk about. They were very attentive, very focused, which was surprising because I don't know that I had all that much patience when I was their age. Uh, the thing that resonated with me is I got a chance to ask the students there how many of them knew with a pretty fair high degree of certainty what they wanted to do outside of high school after they graduated uh, for a living. And it was less than 10% of the students raised their hands and I probably would have been in that group myself when I was in, in their age. So I think those outreach things are, are definitely something that we should look at doing as a, a community. And it, it also goes to show you that, you know, maybe we're, we're not doing a great job of, you know, sort of giving young people an idea of different potential career paths and trying to do a better job of finding those interests earlier. When I think back to my days, I think I maybe had a 10-15 uh, minute conversation with my high school guidance counselor after I took the ACT exam and that was about it. I was probably in the same boat. Uh, I, well, I shouldn't say probably. I was a teenager in the 80s and um, yeah, I ended up joining the Army because I thought that was the, my better option besides all the other nonsense I was pulling. And great for me. Got started in my IT career much later in life because of it. But um, I agree that I probably would have been one of those kids that looked at you like, know what I want to do after high school. I don't know what I want to do after lunch. So, <laughs> yeah, that would have been me, I think. So, again, good for you. And I can say that I do not know... Neil O'Farrell, but after that kind of introduction of him and who he is, I can tell you that I will get to know Neil O'Farrell. Uh, if nothing else, I will meet him at your event in February because he sounds like somebody I would want to know. Great. Yeah, he's definitely going to be looking for volunteers, so that's really one of the reasons I wanted to give him the final time slot is to uh, make a case and see if uh, um, see if we can find other people that are willing to take a little bit of their time, donate a little bit of their time uh, to his worthy cause. Outstanding. Well, he certainly sounds like he is on a great path to helping. All right. So we're almost bumping up against our time limit with Matt, but we have one more huge announcement that I'm not going to steal Matt's thunder from because I know that he's been working on this. I almost want to say years. Um, but before we get to that announcement, we're going to take a quick 30-second break. For those of you who don't know that are into the heavy metal, you like all these three-day festival concert types events, you used to have Rock on the Range up in Columbus, Ohio. Last year was its 12th and final year. This year, a whole new event by a whole different set of people called Sonic Temple Festival. This thing is going to have heavy metal. They're going to have comedians like Andrew Dice Clay, Paulie Shore. Yep, we'll be up there interviewing them now. What does that have to do with 
this kind of tech IT show? Well, nothing. But I get to have a second show, and I just get to go out and interview people and have fun. So we'll be out there live interviewing Pauly Shore, Andrew Dice Clay, um, Soundgarden, and a few other bands out there from backstage. So you'll want to make sure that you tune in. But here is a quick promo about that event. The Sonic Temple Art and Music Festival has arrived. Map Free Stadium, Columbus, Ohio, May 17th through the 19th with Foo Fighters. System of the Down. Disturbed. Get on, get on. With Bring Me the Horizon. Prodigy. Ghost. Hailstorm. Lamb of God. The Cult. Andrew Dice Clay. Oh. And more. Go to SonicTempleFestival.com for everything. See ya at the temple. Right on. So if you are a heavy metal fan, I don't know how in the hell you would miss going up to Columbus, Ohio uh, to Sonic Temple Festival. And if you do happen to go, reach out and let me know that you're coming. I'd love to meet you in person up there. We'll grab a mosh pit together. Uh, I'm never too old to hit a mosh pit, although uh, you might have to help me up off the ground when it's over. So, right on. All right, Matt. I know that you've worked on this thing for a long time, and I think you were trying to get this guest lined up last year or the year before, maybe even both. Um, And I'm sure there's plenty of my listeners who also do their own blogs and podcasts and things like that that have been trying to, to do what you pulled off so i'm going to tell you that you pulled out a major coup in this world of it security and bringing uh this event together so without me saying another word i'm gonna let you have your own thunder great thanks dave so simpa has been around for a very long time as we discussed earlier for the previous 19 years the focus in December has been on security, and more recently, the Simpa Security SIG has been running the main group's December meeting, in addition to hosting our own security SIG meeting, and that meeting has been dubbed Hacker's Night, and it started all the way back in 1999, so this is the 20th year. It's one of those banner milestone numbers that you want to really do something special to make it memorable. And so I've been working for a long time because people have been clamoring for it. People have come up to me and said, can you get this person to come speak to our group? And as you alluded, I've been working on it for some time. And uh, one of the reasons to announce it this early is because there have been some you know, sad feelings about DerbyCon being in their final year. Uh, There will no longer be DerbyCons after this year. So I feel like the people within a reasonable proximity to Cincinnati area, Louisville area, Cleveland area, could use something to look forward to. And so this is a great venue to make this uh, announcement. But on December 4th, 2019, we're venue to be determined. We're going to have Hackers Night 20, and our feature speaker for that is going to be none other than Dave Kennedy. Man, I've been waiting a month just to hear you say that out loud, because I, you know, granted you and I, you told me a little bit about this earlier, and I've been like, damn it, how do I get you on the air, and how fast can we talk about this, and when is too soon, and it almost felt like January was too soon, but it's not. It just, it's never too soon for something like that. That is a great, I mean, I can tell you that I've spent the last year trying to get him as a guest on this show, and it's been crickets in response. So, and I know he's getting, you know, thousands of requests and TV shows with Mr. Robot and other things, so he does his thing, but man, he's coming to Cincinnati, and it's all you, so kudos to you for such a a thing, and um I'm wondering how soon you're – so let's talk a little bit about registration and what that's going to mean. So if, if people want to come, are, you know, do you have a max limit of seats? Um, is there a fee to register for that event? Um, let's speak to that a little bit so people can start planning and figuring out what they want to do. Sure. So the Hackers' Night meetings are free for SIMPA members. Uh, SIMPA – Anybody who wants to join can do so online, in person at the door. You can send in a check by mail if you like, or a money order. Uh, Simpa membership is $35 a year. It's 
SIMPA is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so those are tax-free memberships and or well tax deductible memberships let me rephrase and uh, for individuals that want to join SIMPA on Hackers Night they can show up at the door and become a new member there uh, it's a perfectly viable option uh, if you just want to come to that one meeting and for guests it'll be five dollars uh, that includes uh, food and beverages and uh, any sort of a parking situation, we're still working out logistics on the venue. Uh, we were able to come up with something sort of last minute um, back in December for Hackers Night 19. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is book several venues in advance and then find out from Mr. Kennedy which one is most convenient for him, and we'll probably go with that one. Uh, but for anybody who would like to pre-register, if you go to meetup.com, pull up the Tech Life Cincinnati group, and if you pull up the calendar, you can, under events, you can go to December 4th, and you should find our meeting there. The registration process for meetup.com, I believe they support single sign-on with Google and Facebook accounts. Or you can alternately register whatever email address you would like. Um, with your profile, you can choose what information you want to share. Uh, I have people that you know, just put their name out there, have no qualms about that. Some people will use a one word handle or alias to register. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, it's just a way for us to anticipate the head count. Uh, we'll probably look to keep registrations at a maximum of about 50 to 60 people uh, just to make sure that we, whatever venue we select uh, we'll have ample seating. Uh, then if we feel we can increase that number, we will. But uh, initially, I would say probably about 50 or 60 is what we'll limit that to. And uh, again, uh, it'll be somewhere around the Cincinnati area. I've got several prospective venues in mind, and I'm going to work on booking those and making a determination on the best one. Man, 50 people and a an opportunity to hear uh Dave Kennedy speak and or give examples of his work or whatever it is his topics are going to be i mean that that's like going to a private acoustic set with Godsmack or something i mean that is very intimate setting very much uh, an opportunity and you talk about 5 bucks to get in the door and uh have some food i, I dude I can tell you that right now, if anybody goes to that meetup.com link, you're going to see Dave, the IT guy, at the top of that registration list because I'm making sure my butt was head of seat. So good stuff. Man, I can't tell you enough. Uh, I, we will certainly circle back again uh, with you for another fourth or fifth or sixth or all of them visit uh, throughout the course of this year, especially once you kind of nail down a venue and and you're really hardcore ready to to know how many seats you're going to have um we will revisit this conversation again and have you back on and and talk about him coming out in december but for those that somehow didn't just hear that uh december 2019 dave kennedy cincinnati ohio that's all you need to know the rest of it is going to be on matt's uh, meetup com meetup.com page and uh check out the uh, Bring Your Own Security Radio Twitter, you will find, I will link all of that stuff out there over the next days and weeks and months. So, Matt, man, dude, you have went from somebody that I didn't know a year and a half ago to someone I have to look at and say, man, I can't keep up with you anymore. You've got so many great things going. You're putting together these presentations as a speaker then you're putting together these hands-on labs and demonstrations and and then you do something you know kind of little like oh, i'll just bring dave kennedy to cincinnati so um man congrats to you on a great i don't know if you consider it growth or maybe i'm just late to the party but um from where i sit you've gone leaps and bounds in a very short time so kudos to you well, thank you. It was going to be hard to uh, top. I gave a uh, talk on uh, 
why ScriptKitty succeeded at Hackers Night 19 before turning it over to our feature speaker, Daryl Highland. It was going to be pretty hard to top that, and really the only person I could think of is i got to get Dave Kennedy in here. He's one of the titans of the information security industry and just a fantastic person. So I couldn't think of anybody better to headline our uh, Hackers Night 20 event than, than him. I I fully agree. I mean, I I was going to jokingly say it's Dave the IT guy as a headliner, but um, that would have been like just a cruel and unusual unusual punishment joke for anybody uh, to hear that comparative to the real Dave that's coming. So um, we won't even try to waste time with that joke because it was going to fall flat. Um, but again, for anybody that's missed out, um, the next Simpa uh, security group meeting in Cincinnati is coming up in February on the 21st. Uh, Bill Simp from Columbus OWASP, Neil O'Farrell, whose name I just heard today with schooledinsecurity.org, and Dolph Smith and Matt Panabaker from Sophos will be uh, headlining up there with Matt coming up. So make sure if you're around Greater Cincinnati on a Thursday, come visit Matt and me because I will be there too. And, uh, Matt, thanks again, buddy. Your third visit with us, and it's certainly not going to be the last. So I appreciate you jumping on with us tonight and helping make this a great show and exciting first episode of 2019 for me. Great. Thank you for having me back, Dave. All right, bud. Thank you. I'll catch you later. All right. Man, Matt. Matt Shearer. He, I, I can't say enough about that dude. He is insanely exciting about the things that he does and um he actually hooked up hooked me up with getting to go um do a little bit of a presentation not much i get to host a round table that he was involved in at a cincinnati event and i gotta tell you the people that he knows are amazing and like i said before having the talent that we have in cincinnati in the security industry and i'm sure there's plenty other IT segments, you know, programming or uh, networking or whatever that are rock stars as well. But it's it's amazing how I can just walk into a room and go find Matt. And then the next thing I know, there are 15 other rock stars close by because they all know him. And I get to kind of bask in his glow a little bit. So I have to admit that uh, knowing Matt has been great for me and hopefully for those others who know him. So... Great stuff. Dave Kennedy, Cincinnati. Who would have thought that, right? So exciting stuff. Uh, I can't imagine trying to put that together for 20 years and finally getting there, how good that must feel. So, All right. Well, we've got about uh, 20 minutes left, and i got just a few other topics I want to bring up tonight. Um, just things that over the last couple months have happened or that I've noticed or whatever. So these are just more kind of like, hey, did you know kind of topics. Um as we all know, uh, I had a co-host of this show, and um, I no longer do. And so that was by design. So um, the show was kind of taking a, a twist that um, didn't seem like the original direction, and it was decided that it was just better to um, part ways. So with that, I want to say that Jason and I uh, did not part on bad terms, and uh, he's doing some great things out of the Washington, D.C. area. So uh, please make sure that you uh, check him out and look him up in some of the things he is doing as well. Also, you might have heard a new intro to this show, and Misty is a young lady who I never met in person, but online. She's done some audio work for me in the past, so... She did my audio intros and outros that you have not yet heard. And I told her, I said, hey, Missy, send me a quick uh, commercial about your services that I can play for my listeners. And for those of you who have a podcast or some other electronic thingamajig and you need some voiceover or audio sampling or other stuff and you want somebody else to do it, uh, Misty's a great person. So let me give you about uh, 18 seconds of Misty. So you need a high quality intro for your podcast, but money doesn't grow on trees. I get it. And I got you bold podcast intros and outros, professional production quality, starting at just a five spot to order yours. Go to fiverr.com slash MV productions. There you go. Pretty simple. 
That's right. You heard that five uh, five dollars. I mean, that's five dollar footlongs, right? Oh man, I'm telling you, I'm on a roll tonight. But uh, Missy's great. You've heard her intro to my show. You're going to hear her outro here in just about uh, 19 minutes. So uh, stay tuned for some of that great work. Um, all right, so I want to jump into a tool that I, I know many of you are going to say, duh, this is old news. Um, but for me, it's kind of new news because it's a tool called JCrypt Tool, J-C-R-Y-P-T-O-O-L, JCrypt Tool. Now, I, from an encryption perspective, have never really dove headfirst into decrypting something by hand or wondering how did they get there from here? I always just wanted to have the tools to encrypt and decrypt and keep it simple. However, I get introduced to this JCrypt tool. It's free. It's GitHub. Uh, just Google JCrypt tool. You'll find it. What's interesting about it to me is that it allows you to go in and do some encryption. It allows you to um, play games. It allows you to have some visuals, so certificate verification, Android unlocked pattern, um, Diffie Home and Key exchanges for those of you that are getting that are into uh, VPNs and stuff. So it, a lot of things it does uh, games it teaches, but it also will just flat let you encrypt something and decrypt something that you can import and export. So you can look at asymmetric tools or crypto uh, classic cryptos like. Uh, the Caesar, the old Caesar, Playfair, XOR, uh, transposition, um, substitution. You can, just like the Germans with an Enigma, uh, you can get into hashing with MD5 and SHA. You can get into symmetric AES, Dragon, and others. So the point of telling you all of this is this is a great tool. And even for old people like me who have been around IT for a long time, and have been using encryption for a very long time, but didn't really know how it was doing all of its magical stuff behind the scenes. This is a great program. It's free. Um, they're, they're keeping a running update on it, like a monthly uh, release. I looked back. It's not truly happening monthly. Sometimes it happens once or twice every other week, and then it doesn't happen for three or four weeks. So it's kind of random, but it's consistent. Um, but take a look at JCrypt tool if you have ever been interested in uh, encryption and how that stuff kind of works behind the scenes. I have learned more in the last couple weeks about that kind of stuff than I ever thought I would know. So JCrypt tool. I also want to talk a little bit about um, this program called Disk. <laughs> I want to say it's called Disk Encryptor, but I completely Disk Investigator. That's it. Completely lost my mind. So Disk Investigator. So for those of you who do forensics, things like that, uh, nifty little tool. Uh, not not uh, at, at the level of you know some of the higher, really higher level forensic tools. But again, if you are just learning about uh, forensics, or if you work at a small company and maybe you're trying to confirm that somebody was doing something maybe they should not have been doing on your company computer, great little tool. Um, also wanted to comment about Google. Did you know, and again, many of you might, I don't because I'm not a developer, so I'm just learning uh, now about developing and actually writing my own code. Um, but there, Google has this program called Google Chrome Canary, and it's basically their beta of their next gen Google Chrome. And they are allowing you to get in there and play with some stuff under the covers a little bit and kind of um, testing, hey, I want to write this plugin, this thing or jig, and I want to make it work with Google Chrome. Will it work? Well, that's a great place to start. So go check out Google Chrome Canary. You can download it. Now it'll tell you that it's you know in beta and subject to this and that problem. So like any other beta, you be careful. But Google Chrome Canary. And uh, what else did I want to tell you about tonight? Oh, so uh, for those of you that use the Kali Linux uh, VM um, or you know the uh, VirtualBox version, or you installed it your own. Um, the newer update is out, uh, so check that out. Kali Linux for those of you who are pen testers, um, 
that like all of your tools pre-built into something um, if you didn't know about Kali Linux the VM um, you can download it as an entire pre-made VM get all the tools you can run it from VirtualBox or VMware great great toolkit uh, I actually learned Linux on Kali back when it was uh, called uh, back uh, what the hell was it called back something or another um, Backtrack, yeah, man, it's been so long. I'm so used to now being called Cali Linux, but anyway, uh, they changed its name, same stuff, just better. So, Cali Linux VM. Sorry, going through a lot of them quick because it's like, man, I want to throw out a lot of stuff, and I don't, not my goal here tonight to teach you about all of it and how to use it, things like that. My goal tonight is to kind of, hey, say, hey, did you know this existed? And if you didn't, um, go check this out. I um, also want to quickly talk about for those corporate type people who are thinking about encrypting your desktops, your laptops, whatever it is you might feel like you need to encrypt from a hard drive, whole disk perspective. You know, the, there are the obvious, well known ones. Um, but I'm going to tell you about one that we use at the company I work for, which is a hospital system. It's called Deslock. Now, Deslock is an ESET encryption program but I will tell you that it is very lightweight it is server managed you can push out the encryption you can uh, make a lot of administrative level changes you can remove the encryption all without having to physically ever touch the device as long as it's turned on and you know its name or its IP address you can encrypt that device so deslock d-e-s-l-o-c-k so take a look at that if you are looking at encryption from a pricing perspective it is great for small business medium businesses even large because their per computer license is um, I take that back so they don't license it per computer they license it per user so uh, Dave, I might have a laptop and a desktop that I use, but instead of having to buy two licenses, one for my laptop and one for my desktop, I buy a license for Dave. That license follows me, so we encrypt the drives, then the drives are unlocked based on who the user is. So instead of assigning it, like I said, to the computer, you assign the license to the person, then you assign in the server, you assign the person to that device. And once you kind of have that grouping set up with, hey, okay, this person might sign into these one or five computers, depending on your shared environment, your pricing is way cheaper. So you might have 50 computers, but you might only have 20 employees. So instead of buying 50 licenses, you're buying 20. It's great, great. We've had it now at the hospital for almost two years. And uh, knock on wood, and I don't want to jinx myself, but we've had great success uh, with that uh, that that product so Deslock from ESET um, hopefully I didn't just jinx myself by talking so great about them because you know how SIT people are all paranoid about something like that um, yeah so I'm crossing my fingers and uh, my toes and uh, giving myself the Hail Mary sign real quick to make sure I don't do anything stupid all right what else do I got for you um, hmm. that's about all the really, like, crazy stuff. Of course, there are new things coming out every day. We all know that. There are new notices and warnings. Um, you know, the whole, say, the Apple, right? The the little hack in their um, FaceTime uh, group chat meeting uh, capability. Apple had to release um, or had to shut down that particular group function today. They sent out their message and if you have an iPad, an iPhone, or a Mac with FaceTime, you are currently unable to do group because somebody could dial in but hang up and still listen to the microphone on the other side, even if the person never answered the call. So, yeah, so if you've got an Apple product, go try it. Well, you can't try it now because if you do, Apple's already pushed out the update that says you can no longer use that, that feature until they get it patched. So, great stuff. Um, what other big stuff? I've got uh, next week, I'm going to have a guest from Storage RSA. They're out of the UK. They make 
a hardware encrypted uh, USB drives. Um, thumb drives, at, you know, the size of a conventional thumb drive, and then the larger USB drives. So anywhere from as small as 256 uh, gig to uh, to five terabytes, I believe, is their largest drive. Uh, they sent me one that I've had now for about a week that I've been playing with, and it basically has the keypad right on the disk. So you plug that disk in. It doesn't even recognize in your operating system until you've punched in that code to unlock it which is kind of nice. Uh, you can set your missed uh, unlocks uh, access attempts from anywhere from 3 to 99, and once you exceed the wrong code that many times, the disk will erase itself back to factory default to protect your data. Also, it has hardware tampering capabilities, so if somebody tries to pry it open or use uh, one of the silicon injectors and other techniques that hardware hackers like to use, that it will supposedly detect that that attempt and also erase the drive. So we're going to have one of the uh, folks from uh, from the UK on with us, Zaya, uh, one of their account managers. But I also made sure that I asked for somebody that was technically capable of answering in-depth technical questions. So it won't be just a sales pitch because I don't do that. Um, but yeah, so Storage RSA, check them out. Um, I'll have some links up uh, getting into next week's show uh, via Twitter and Facebook. So, Storage RSA. I'll also be heading out to the RSA event out in San Fran the first week of March. So, if you happen to be out there, please uh, let me know that you're going to be there. I'd love to catch up with you. Say hi in person. However, I will be honest and say that I am taking my wife and daughter with me, and we're going to get a vacation in while there. So uh, I'll be at the event most of the time, and then some of the time I will be out enjoying San Francisco uh, because we have, as a family, have never been there before. So we're looking forward to that space. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, I think I'm allowed to say, so hopefully I'm not going to blow myself up, but I am excited, so I'm going to say it. And that is, today I got one of the invites from the ISC Squared organization to uh, head to what they call a writing workshop uh, for three days to uh, develop some of the new questions for the CISSP exam. I will be on that team that uh, apparently it's really highly secure environment, uh, no phones, no internet while you're there, um, have to sign non-disclosure that you can't talk about what things that you developed, what questions and, and theories and formats and blah, blah, blah. So about the only thing I'm allowed to do is say, yes, I was involved in it, and I'm allowed to put it on a resume or list of accomplishments that I was a part of that team. So very exciting for me personally to be invited to go down and spend three days developing the next version of the CISSP exam. So exciting, exciting news for me personally. All right, we're getting about to the end of the road today. I appreciate everybody. I, again, want to say thanks to Matt for coming on with us and sharing his just wide range of experiences, the places that he's been, the places that he's going, what it takes to, to put together one of his events, and, and maybe later on when we have him come back to, to revisit the, the Dave Kennedy thing in December. But I also don't want to blow up the fact, or I don't want to miss – you know, how much effort, he did allude to it a little bit in his conversation about how much effort it takes. And all he talked about was, hey, if you're putting together a slide deck as a presentation or you're trying to put together a hands-on class, how many hours of effort it takes, even if you're using some pre-made stuff to help you along. So Matt does that, right? He's been putting those presentations together. He's putting the different events together. But yeah, then he turns around and he's like, well, I'm just going to be in charge of the whole monthly meeting. So, you know, every month he's putting together a vendor. He's around, you know, so they, you can have free food there. He's putting together um, a speaker or two. In some cases, he has two or three speakers at these events. So each month he's reaching out to these people so he doesn't have the same people over and over. Plus, he has a regular job. I know he's had a full-time job. So that stuff ain't easy. And the fact that he's doing it every month and, you know, they are rolling onto year number 20. And 
I can honestly say I'm not exactly positive how long of those 20 years he's been involved in organizing, but it doesn't matter. He's been doing it for as long as I know him, and that's a lot. So, again, kudos to Matt for everything he's been able to accomplish um, and that, that security interest group. Also, for the people that come there, I want to tell you that, that you guys and girls make that interesting and fun for me personally to come up there and see mostly the same faces, but some new faces. But to see a crowd as large as 25 and 30 on a Thursday night at the end of any given month is exciting. You know, you don't go and you wonder, man, I wonder if I'll be the only one to show up or, you know, oh, there's only going to be two or three of us. There's not really going to be anything new to talk about. Not true. So many people show up at these things that you can't possibly talk to everybody plus listen to the presentation. So you, you've got to kind of divide it up. And, hey, this month I'll talk to that person. This month I'll talk to this person. And it's, it's exciting. I mean, it is exciting. So uh, to everybody that comes to that event, um, you also make the event great for me by showing up and just being there and letting me hear the questions that you ask. So maybe I didn't even know I was supposed to be asking those questions. So, yeah, okay, I'm done. Not trying to suck it up, but, man, it is exciting. And I want to make people sh I want to make sure that people know around this area, if you're in the security subsector of IT, you have to start coming to this event. Um, and not just for December, but for as much as you can. Um, and like I said, in no small feet, I changed my show date. Um or at least I tried to and was successful so that I could attend those things more and make myself a better IT security person too. So, all right, that's it. No more groveling. No more sucking out the mat. No more. Uh, thanks to you for listening. Don't forget to uh, document that you listen tonight. And uh, if you have certifications like the CISSP or any of the ISC squareds, uh, some of the Microsoft certs, uh, CCNA and other stuff, you might be able to count this one hour of your gracious time uh, as a CPE uh, for this coming year. So keep keep listening and uh, keep documenting, and hopefully I will see you all again soon. Thanks again. I am Dave the IT Guy, and good night, everybody. Okay, that's it. Hopefully you've been inspired to learn more or at the very least heard something new that you didn't know already. Don't forget to follow the show on Twitter at BYOS Radio and Facebook at Facebook.com slash BYOS Radio. You can download each episode from iHeartRadio, Apple Music, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and just about any other podcasting software you like. You can also listen live every Tuesday night at 9 Eastern from the BringYourOwnSecurity.net website. You might even learn CPE for your IT certifications so tune in weekly 